everything we have to fear is in war. There is no substitute for victory. Let us never negotiate out of fear. We stand undivided, forever united, fighting hand in hand for the liberty we burn, for glory and honor, for our sons and daughters, ever mindful of the lessons we've learned. Let the torch of freedom burn. You found your way to the intersection of faith and politics. This is Wall Builders Live, and we're thrilled to have you with us today. It's Good News Friday, which I always look forward to. I love good news, and I guess I like Friday. I don't know, David, but this is a great time <laughs> to get to find out some of the things that are happening across our country that we can be excited about. So welcome to Good News Friday on Wall Builders Live. I'm Rick Green here with David Barton. I see lots of good news next to your computer there, bro. There's a stack of it, man. We got a lot of stuff. Kind of choose your state this time. There's a lot of good stuff. Does that going. mean I get to just pick a state and you'll give good news you from know, that state? You know, it would be real close to that. you have... Um... But I'm not organized that yeah. way. So you'd have to listen to me shuffle through a lot of papers because it's in there somewhere. We should try that sometime, though, because usually on Fridays I just say, all right, Dave, where are we going? And sometimes you go geographically and you pick a state. Sometimes you pick a topic. No, no, like, like, I, I like being the driver. Yeah. You, you, you want to know where I'm going? I'm, I don't want you backseat driving, Okay, bro. You, all right. You so I don't get this. to just say, hey, give me some good news no, out no, no. of Oregon. That's or, backseat driver. No. I want good news on Congress or... You're doing pretty good. Doing, I, am I, I getting can, close? I can, I can okay. handle those so far. Let's see. How about... Um, I'm just going to guess here. How about judicial good news? Is there any... Any decisions out of the court? There's that, a bunch of, of that. Bunch of good but I'm not going to give it to you yet. Oh, That's man, later. Man, I'm having to work for it to th this this particular Friday. Okay. I, this one is going to be um, this is going to be good news because this is kudos to our audience because I'm going to go through some stuff where we ask them to weigh in, and as a result of them and others weighing in, they were part of the group that weighed in, and I don't think anybody can ever take credit for you know what happens. I see guys going and say, hey, we won the Senate we race made for this so happen, so. Or, yeah. No, no, no. There's a whole bunch of us. So we were part of the group that, that joined with others. To do, but we've got a lot of, a lot of good news with, with some things with that. So let's just start, go back. Uh, it's been, I don't know, a few days back. We had, um, Senator Josh Rakeen and, uh, Representative Jason Nelson out of Oklahoma. Oklahoma, home. yeah, on the Common Core thing. And we needed, we needed folks to get the governor's office yeah. and, Governor Mary Fallon signed the bill to eliminate Common Core from Oklahoma, so that was really good news. Man, that was a huge call to action. I remember that. We were it saying, was. hey, pick up the phone, call. She's asked. She wanted to hear from people. And, and she did. Uh, so people all over the country. And, and, and let me tell you, Mary Mary's a good lady. I know Mary knew her when she was in Congress, knew her when she was a lieutenant governor, before she went to Congress, et cetera. And, and Mary's a good lady, but she's the head of the Governor's Association. Not Republican governors, but all Governor's Association. And the governors have still been pretty strong on board with the Common Core. And so the position the Governors Association was, hey, this is our thing. Common, well, our, it started as their thing. It didn't end up as their thing. So they've been reluctant to leave it or move away from it. And so Mary had been outspoken all the way through this in support of Common Core. And, and as this thing was built in the last two to three years in Oklahoma, she's been a supporter of Common Core. And for her to sign this bill, which eliminates Common Core, is really courageous because it goes against the position she's been taking for two or three years. It also goes against the position that the Governance Association has taken, but she did that. She listened to the people, and the people spoke, and there was enough evidence given, and so it was, it's and, really good. And I'm good. guessing she, in her own study, I mean, you know, one of the things we teach students at Patriot Academy, hey, if you say you're going to support a bill or you're going to support something, you tell somebody you're going to help them with something in the, in the legislature, if you change your mind, you need to go to that person That's and right. tell them why. There's nothing wrong with getting more information, studying. That's right. I mean, I know this is going to shock you, David, but I've been wrong before. Wow. I, I, believe it or not, wow. I, I have come to the wrong conclusion. No, wait. You're telling me you're human after yeah, all? I know it's shocking. Oh, man. But once you get more information, it's it's not bad to change your position right. if you figure out, hey, you know what? I didn't have the whole picture or I get persuaded one way or the other. And I I think a lot of that is well, see, happening across the country. That's Proverbs 6, 1 and 2. Proverbs 6, 1 and 2 says if, if you made a vow, you told somebody you're going to do something, and you need to break the vow, you go to a meeting and say, here it is, I can't, can't do it. And obviously Mary did the research. She didn't just go with what people said because it's not a democracy. This is a Republican form of government. Right. And so, you know, the, the mob rule doesn't do it. 
But it sometimes makes you go do the that's homework exactly and, and, and say, "Well, wait, exactly maybe it. I missed something on this." You remember, we we had the uh, we had Senator Larry Grooms on from South Carolina, and two yeah. years ago when he brought up the bill, he got zero no that's no right. two supporters, two supporters, and then now two years later, the bill to eliminate Common Core passed unanimously, unanimously through the to, Senate to go from only and, two people back to right. everybody, and so that means a bunch of senators did the research, and Mary did as well because yeah. this has been a, a noisier and a noisier item. And people definitely weighed in, uh, and, and so Mary did a, a great job of, of saying no Common Core. And, and I'll be honest with you, when all of the Common Core stuff first happened, and the and the opposition jumped up, at first I thought, uh, it's just is this just knee jerk reaction to yeah. anything about education? Yeah. And I think that may have been the attitude of, of a lot of folks in the in the political realm. And once, but once you dig in, you realize how bad it is. I started getting those emails, you yeah. know, that were saying, "Hey, here's an example of what's being taught in this." School district, or they're using this out of Common Core, and it started waking me up. And uh, I think a lot of people are experiencing that on Common Core. So that is that is great news. So we're starting off the program already with with a big one, Oklahoma, and and actually I, I've lost count now, but several states now have rejected. Uh, it sounds like Jindal's going to do the same thing. You in know, and Jindal's Louisiana. really funny because Jindal said no already, and now it looks like he's going to have to sue his own education commissioner because the commissioner, You're kidding me. no commissioner, saying we're not getting out of it. And Jindal said, Yeah, we are. No, we are. So it looks like that Bobby Jindal is going to have to, Governor Jindal and Louis Sims is going to have to sue his own education commissioner wow. to get him out. But that's a number of states that are that are moving that direction, and so it, it is good. Yeah. It's really good. Good stuff. All right, we're going to take a quick break. We'll be back. You're listening to Wall Builders Live with David Barton and Rick Green. This is David Barton with another moment from America's history. Although education has remained an emphasis in America for nearly 200 years, what has changed the most over that period of time is the philosophy of education. For example, while religion finds no place of refuge in our schools today, such was not the case at the time of our founding fathers. In fact, when the Delaware Indian chiefs brought their youth to be trained in America's schools, on June the 12th, 1779, George Washington told them, You do well to wish to learn our arts and our way of life and above all, the religion of Jesus Christ. These will make you a greater and happier people than you are. Congress will do everything they can to assist you in this wise intention. According to George Washington, what students learned above all in American education at the time of the Founding Fathers was the religion of Jesus Christ. For more information on God's hand in American history, contact Wall Builders at 1-800-8-REBUILD. Welcome back. Thanks for staying with us here on Wall Builders Live. It's Good News Friday, so we're bringing you some good news from across the nation. Hang, and, hang on a second, Rick. Yeah. Because before we went to break, you said, you know, it looks like it's starting to catch on the states. And I mentioned Louisiana, but there's a bunch of other states, too. Yeah. And, and so Mike Pence in Indiana. What what people need to do is go to haltcommoncore.com. And we have a map on there that shows every state and where Common Core is in that state, what process it's in, whether it's still firmly there, whether they're looking at getting rid of it, whether they've introduced legislation to get rid of it. And it's really cool because just four months ago, there weren't that many states that, that had had exited. And now you look at it, and there's a lot of states on that map that are getting out of Common Core. So Halt. HaltCommonCore.com. HaltCommonCore.com. And so that's the one that's got the map, and you can, it's color-coded, so you can it's tell color-coded. what's happening. You can tell, it's really cool because it has a lot of good information on there. We, we have the eight major problems with Common Core, and you give you documentation on each of that. If whatever state you're in, you can click on your state and see all the groups in your state that oppose Common Core. So if you want to help them or if you want to find out more, it gives you their websites, their contacts. Uh, but it also gives you that national map to show you what the nation looks like and where we are in Common Core. And the House of Representatives passed a bill saying the federal government is going to get out of Common Core. Of course, you can't get Harry Reid to go along with that or the president. But it, it's good that we've got at least one body in Congress. Well, that, that tells you it's not deal. just a, a regional or one state that's know, right. or a couple state things. I mean, if the House is passing it, that's the 435 representatives of we the people all across the country. So even if we can't get it through the Senate yet, that's still a great indication. It's of a the great indication is. moving the right direction. I've got a, one for you from the Gates Foundation. Wait a minute. I thought they generally funded liberal things. So. Well, I, I was waiting for that reaction because I, I, I figured you were going to react like the Ninth Circuit. Yeah, you know yeah. What wait, I'm good saying? news from where? From from the Gates Foundation. Of course, the Gates Foundation is a big supporter of Common Core. They're also a big supporter of abortion and Planned Parenthood. 
I didn't know that. I didn't know they were involved. Until a couple of weeks ago. I have here in my hands the blog from Melinda Gates who says they're no longer going to fund abortion. No kidding. Yeah. So the Gates Foundation, they've got tons of money. And so that, you know, that's that's a hard thing. Planned Parenthood is losing money. Now, they've been losing it from the states, which really hurt them. And now they're losing it from private private foundation. And this is a big foundation. So Melinda Gates has has announced that they're not doing that anymore. They're they're not they're not going to do the Planned Parenthood kind of stuff anymore. And that's that's good news. Yeah, you know, that's that's good, a lot of money. That's good news, and that's a big deal. Usually on this issue, you, you don't find many people switching sides or you know changing their support or, or withdrawing their support, whether they're pro-life or, or pro-abortion. So that's, that's a big deal. Yeah, and this is what she says. She says, I understand there's much emotion, uh, but she says, this is why when I asked about my views on abortion, I say that, like everyone, I struggle with the issue but I've decided not to engage on it publicly, and the Gates Foundation has decided not to fund abortion. So they've decided to be neutral in the thing, and that's a huge growth from where they were. So yeah. that's her statement on it, and that, that's a good thing. Good deal. One more for you on where we asked. We had a program earlier with the group Porn Harms and, and Pat Truman, who who has been a prosecutor, federal prosecutor on porn. This is the Verizon deal. That's right. right. Yeah. And he talked about Verizon being one of the funders of porn. And we asked people to call and let them know, and guess right. what? Verizon took all that porn stuff down. So Verizon responded, and they've said their porn stuff. Now, they, they still have porn out there through some of their affiliates, right? but they themselves have pulled it down. Which and they is, took, if I remember reading this, that this is one of the few things I've actually read that uh, when you announce this stuff, it's usually news to me. But I saw the email on this, and it looked like the specific stuff that, that Pat had brought to their attention I think he may be the real reason why they did this because he bet. specifically pointed. Look, this is where you guys have gone. It was literally kitty porn. That's stuff. right. I mean, this was bad stuff. It was kitty porn, and exactly. They, and they have yanked that. A- every out. one of the things he he pointed out is what they pulled down. Wow. So they pulled down. Now, I thought it was interesting too that Verizon. I didn't know they had a you know a relationship with Google, but nonetheless, um, Google has stopped selling pornographic phone apps, and Google is prohibiting advertisements for porn sites on their stuff. So, you know, that's that's great. You know, you know? Th- this may be the first time on a Good News Friday we've seen that issue go the right direction. Normally, it's just been going worse and worse the other way. I mean, you know, it's more available. It's everywhere. It's This is the first time I've seen a pullback, especially for private organizations like this. And, and for people who, who don't understand this, big business is not a friend of conservatives. Small business is. Yeah. Chamber of Commerce is not a friend of conservatives. Big business isn't. And so people say, oh, Republicans, big business. No, no, no. no. Re- re- big business by margin of two to one funds Democrats over Republicans. They are liberal. They are not conservative. And even though Democrats beat up on Republicans for their association with big business, it's exactly the opposite. It's it Democrats. Is. And so, and that's where a lot of the culture wars being lost is in big business corporate. That's right. You know, uh, corporate rooms where that's right. Uh, board rooms is what I was looking for. These board of directors and these decisions that are being made at that level, they're the ones pushing this liberal agenda through their company. And so, l- look at we just had good news from Verizon, from Google, and from Gates Foundation. That's a big deal. That's a big deal because those aren't the groups that we talk about on Good News Fridays. Yeah. Big business is not, you know, and, and that's 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 almost as shocking as the Ninth Circuit giving us <laughs> that's some right. good news. So that's right. always from surprising sources here on Good News Friday. Stay with us, folks. Got to take a quick break. You're listening to Wall Builders Live. This is David Barton with another moment from America's history. Christians have always believed that the greatest life-changing experience available to any individual is a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. And the testimonies of numerous converts confirm the dramatic changes which often accompany salvation. One such testimony of change comes from founding father Noah Webster, who explained, I was led by a spontaneous impulse to repentance, prayer, and entire submission and surrender of myself to my Maker and Redeemer. I now began to understand and relish many parts of the scriptures which before appeared mysterious and unintelligible. In short, my view of the scriptures, of religion, of the whole Christian scheme of salvation, and of God's moral government are very much changed. The power of God to change a life yielded to Him was just as evident at the time of the Founding Fathers as it still is today. For more information on God's hand in American history, contact Wall Builders at 1-800-8-REBUILD. The 
We're back. Thanks for staying with us here on Wobblers Live. It's Good News Friday, and I know you've got some good news from, wait, I'm still guessing, it, it's this is going to be from Florida. Well, not even close. Huh? Go go north a few states, and you, you're doing pretty well. Stay on the East Coast. Oh, Just go north uh, a little let's bit. See, Virginia. Uh, go south a little bit. Um, oh, great. I'm being tested on my <laughs> geography now. This is awful. The good, the, the bad news is Rick is horrible at geography. No matter how much I travel the country, I still have to look up the map to figure out where I'm going. Okay. Wait, let's see. South Carolina. Go north. The, North Carolina. <laughs> North Carolina. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so it only took me four you zero tries down. to zero, zero down. It. Okay, so uh, everybody home's going, why is that funny? I don't know. <laughs> so, all right, North Carolina is the next place we're going for some good North news. Carolina has decided to work on some of their state schools, and they do have state schools in North Carolina, a bunch of them. And they have passed a bill now that for their state schools that requires that state institutions, state organizations, state whatever it is, that they allow that religious or political student organizations, so pro-life groups or religious Christian groups. Now, when you say state schools, you're talking about like a state university? Yeah, that's right. University of North Carolina, NC State, et cetera. Okay, gotcha. Those kind of schools, and there's a bunch more than that. I mean, the state has, I don't know, probably two dozen state universities in it. But it allows students, student organizations may, quote, determine that only persons professing the faith or mission of the group and comporting themselves in conformity with are qualified to serve as leaders of that organization. In other words, they're saying, hey, Religious groups can be allowed to say that we only want religious people on our board. Yeah. Or or the Democrat group on campus can say we right. don't want Republicans being the leaders that's of our right. board. And, they and, have the right to do that. And they've always allowed Democrat and Republican groups to do that, but they've been saying, no, pro-life groups can't do that. They need pro-abortion people on their board. And, and no, Christian groups can't do that. They need atheists on their board. Crazy. And, and so, you know, this – how do I want to say it? Isn't it ridiculously stupid that we have to – pass statutes to redefine the First Amendment for original intent. Yeah. You know, we're, we're because the First Amendment allows you the right of association. That's right. I can choose who I want to hang out with, and the, the, the courts and the, the the great learned institutions of higher education say, no, 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 you can't. We'll tell you who you're going to hang out with. But And, and po- folks at home may think, you know, that this is crazy, you, know, you don't need that. But oh, no. we've done a lot of shows oh, no. where this very thing has been dealt with on campuses where kids have been told. No, you have to allow these well, kids to be didn't, in your... Didn't we have the attorneys tell us nearly 80% of, between 80 and 90%, it was some high number of state campuses do not conform to the First Amendment, either in speech codes or association yeah. codes. Yeah. And, and so you have 90, and by the way, we've seen a lot of change in that in the last just few weeks, where that so many state universities are losing suits now because they're saying, kids, you can have free speech, but only... And that tree that's three quarters of a mile to the back of the school, and you can stand on the back side of the tree, and you can right. only be there from twelve oh one to twelve oh three. Yeah, yeah, that's right. You know, and, and so they're not letting kids have free speech where they want to. Well, they're losing those lawsuits, and they've been losing these on association. And so now the North Carolina legislature stepped up and said, "We're just going to squash this all over the state. We don't need any lawsuits on this. This is ridiculous. You got a First Amendment right of association, and for for pro life and and for religious groups and." And other other groups who have missions like that, you can choose people that have your mission to help further your group. But you know that actually means that there'll be common sense on university campuses. Now, uh, you know, I, Dennis Prager said something the other night that really struck me because he's he is a graduate of Columbia University, one of the most secular universities. He said what struck him on campus one day, and Dennis is a great guy, Orthodox Jew. He was just remembering the scripture and was quoting the scripture he'd memorized that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. He goes, wait, there's no God at Columbia. There's no wisdom at Columbia. There you go. It, and, no and that's, wonder there's no common sense th- on these campuses. There's no common sense because yeah. there's no wisdom. There may be knowledge, but there's not wisdom. Yeah. And the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And when you cut God out, you cut wisdom out. We've always, you know, we've joked here back and forth that it's got to be a curse of God not to have common sense. Well, there it is. The fear of God is what gives you wisdom, and that's common sense, common understanding. And that's why the the state universities are so out of step on so many things, on First Amendment, on Second Amendment, on Third Amendment, on whatever it is, because no God, no common sense. Well, at least the legislators in North Carolina had the common sense to go in and fix this, yeah. which is good. Good stuff. And I'm, I'm guessing there was probably a lot of folks at home in North Carolina pushing those legislators to do that because they'd seen what had been happening across campuses. So there again, we the people letting their voice be heard. You can get some good reactions even in your own state legislature. One more break. Stay with us. It's Good News Friday here on Wall Builders Live.
Have you ever wanted to learn more about the United States Constitution but just felt like, man, the classes are boring or it's just that old language from 200 years ago or I don't know where to start? People want to know, but it gets frustrating because you don't know where to look for truth about the Constitution either. Well, we've got a special program for you available now called Constitution Alive with David Barton and Rick Green. And it's actually a teaching done on the Constitution at Independence Hall in the very room where the Constitution was framed. We take you both to Philadelphia, the Cradle of Liberty and Independence Hall, and to the Wall Builders Library, where David Barton brings the history to life to teach the original intent of our founding fathers. We call it the Quick Start Guide to the Constitution because in just a few hours through these videos, you will learn the Citizen's Guide to America's Constitution. You'll learn what you need to do to help save our constitutional republic. It's fun, it's entertaining, and it's going to inspire you to do your part to preserve freedom for future generations. It's called Constitution Alive with David Barton and Rick Green. You can find out more information on our website now at wallbuilders.com. Let the torch of freedom burn. Welcome back. Thanks for staying with us here on Wall Builders Live. It is Good News Friday, and we've already had some good news from some unlikely sources. So I'm not sure what's going to be last. Is it is it one I could predict, or is this one unusual? No, I, I'm going to take you back to your geography test. Oh, no, no, no. No more failing geography we're, test. We're going to go north of Virginia by one state. Hmm. Wait. That'd be Maryland. Good. Hey, look at <laughs> there. Only because I was recently there. That's <laughs> Maryland. Maryland, a county in Maryland. And Which, Maryland, by the way, is not reciprocal to Texas CHL holders. No, they are super like blue. That. Yes. I mean, yeah. Maryland is the Massachusetts, Connecticut, Vermont uh, of the middle colonies. We actually made a choice to stay in a hotel in Virginia instead of Maryland for that very reason. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. They're they're so wacky, wacky liberal. There. Yeah. And Sorry, I interrupted you. No, man, but you. That, that's yeah. right. I mean, that they, they are. And this is this is this is how ridiculous it is. A county in Maryland has our, our friends at Alliance Defending Freedom just won a lawsuit where this county in Maryland has to pay crisis pregnancy centers in Maryland three hundred and seventy five thousand dollars in a settlement. Now, the reason is, is the crisis pregnancy center sued the county because the county required crisis pregnancy centers. All right. Define a crisis pregnancy center. You know what that is. Tell, tell, tell so, folks what it is. So now now that that. The way I understand that, that's too, usually a pro-life that's a pro-life um, organization facility that, right. it, that is normally going to provide whatever that girl needs uh, to to keep the baby, and, and, and they're going to give them the services, on, hey, and look, counseling. That's right. You don't need yeah. to do an abortion. They're pro-life alternative, and they give the and other typically side. free. I mean, and they're you, free. Usually, it's supported. I mean, it's one of the most important donations we'll help people you with can adoption. make in their community. We'll, we'll yes. give you a sonogram because Planned yes. Parenthood doesn't give you sonograms. We'll show you what's inside you, and, and so I mean, the the crisis pregnancy centers is the alternative to abortion centers. Yes, yes. And so th they're good groups. Well, the county in Maryland, as in many places, requires that when women walk into the crisis pregnancy center, that they urge the women to leave and not to use their services. Wait, so government is saying when someone comes to your place of business, That's right. even your charity here where you're offering free... You need to meet them at the door and say, hey, you really don't want to come in here. That's no. exactly what they're required to do. Wow. Oh, we're fraudulent. We'd say we're crisis pregnancy, but we're not. We're a pro-life center, and you need to stay out of here because if you really want to know about pregnancy, go to Planned Parenthood. Go to the abortion clinic. The county requires that. now. now how it, liberal do you have to be? How pro-death well, do you have to be to pass something like that? Let, a, what, what cities do you think would require that? Baltimore. Yes. And? <laughs> I don't know. Let's see. Uh, um Man, I thought that was the only really bad one No, uh, in Maryland. Don't. What's another big bad one in Maryland? Oh, no, no. Just anywhere in the United States. Oh, anywhere in the United States. Oh, okay. I'm going to guess um, New York City. Good. Los you're, Angeles. You're too out of two. Keep going. Philadelphia. San Francisco. San Francisco, for sure. And I, th That's three out of three. Give me one more. Oh, let's see. How and you're not going to get I guarantee Boston. you won't get no. this. Nope, nope, nope. Tell no. me it's not in Texas. It is. Oh, <laughs> that hurts. Okay, if it's in Texas, it's got to be... You know, I was going to say Houston, but I bet San Antonio's done a lot of no. stupid stuff lately. So, no, not San Antonio. No, come on, man. You know where this wow. is. Dallas? No. Oh, not Austin. Yes, not Austin. Austin. <laughs> but I Austin. live in Austin. That's awful. Yes. Okay. <laughs> so there's your four places that if you walk into a crisis pregnancy center. Yes, Austin is the San Francisco of the South. It man. is. It is so liberal. It is. And, and so it's, it's really cool that this crisis pregnancy center gets $375,000 in damages from the county. 
and they're allowed the right of free speech. Can you imagine that? They they get the right to actually so offer their services. So do you think this will, this will be a shot across the bow and these other cities oh, you bet it is. will say, hey, you even though we're not in that you know, district court, we don't want that happening. Lawsuits happen here are here. already pending in all those Excellent. other cities. All, there's, there's lawsuits already going, and Alliance Defending Freedom is all over this like a duck on a June bug. This is absolutely one that's going to be hard so not I thought to win. liberals were tolerant and they would want to have diversity and other opinions out they, there. I they do. That was they, the, they want diversity as long as you agree with them, and they want tolerance as long as you do what they want. Those are interesting definitions. Yes, of diversity and, and, and tolerance. so, yes. I, but good news now, out that's of Maryland. fantastic news because you don't, you know, usually you hear those kind of things happening and you see the damage they're doing to these babies and these mothers and 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 to the issue of of life. Man, and you're thinking that liberal area, there's just nothing we can do about it. But they did. There is. I'm going to give you one more real quick. Right. Actually, I'm going to go through them. Our friend Jim Bopp, who won the, the case of the U.S. Supreme Court, has been going after uh, all these campaign finance things, really dismantling McCain, Feingold, and others for a number of years. And here the Eighth Circuit strikes down um, Missouri's requirements. And these were saying pro-life groups can't weigh in on candidates, can't give donations of money or run ads. Uh, they've got one in the Ninth Circuit. Arizona had the restrictions. Uh, they've got one in Wisconsin. I mean, I've just got a stack here of all these cases they're winning across the country, striking down campaign finance and getting First Amendment free speech rights back for groups like pro-life groups. Good stuff. This is why I look forward to Good News Friday. So much good news. It's encouraging. It lets you know you can make a difference if you get involved and use your constitutional rights. Thanks for joining us today on Wall Builders Live. We stand undivided.